Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to rant about stuff in the news, but we're going to start out with kind of a financial related topic. It's the subject of Rivian. Rivian, to me, represents the absolute height of ridiculousness in the market. Why is that? Allow me to elaborate. Okay, so Rivian Automotive has produced uh, 150 cars, right? And I'm not, I'm not making a judgment call that I, I, I think Rivian's cars look nice. And people misunderstand me. They think that I hate Tesla. I don't hate Tesla. In fact, I don't think their cars are that great. They don't do it for me. I get it. For some fanboys, they just love Tesla. They love the speed. I get it. I don't like four-door sedans. I don't think it's an attractive-looking car. And then there is, with the electric vehicle problem, there is the problem of having to charge. Now, as technology evolves... These kinks will get moved out of the out of the system. I don't know that I ever believe. Well, I don't want to say ever. I don't know that I believe in my lifetime electric vehicles will be driven by everybody. And it's just the problem of electrifications, certain areas. It's a very first world thing of arrogance that people do with electric vehicles. They think... Well, I've got a reliable grid, so I can plug in my car. You know, so everybody's probably got an electric grid. Well, you know, there's certain countries and continents, Africa, India, they're rapidly developing, but they still don't have an electric grid that is similar to, say, America, Europe, China, a lot of other Asian countries like Japan, it's just not there. Like, like when you when you forecast in this the growth of electric vehicles, what you're not forecasting in is that certain places just don't have the electrical infrastructure to support a massive fleet of electric vehicles. So everybody, they piled in, and this is the this is the problem that people have. It's human nature. It's not not actually making fun of anybody or criticizing them for saying it. It's your view of where technology is going to go versus the reality of what is at hand and how it will develop. Often, technology develops in ways that can't be predicted. So, I'll give you an example of that. You go back to the 2000s, see how many predictions on what the internet will become came true. I guarantee you, it's not that many. And then things you never could have anticipated came out of nowhere, like YouTube. Nobody predicted 20 years ago that one of the dominant forms of entertainment would be this channel on Google where anybody can just upload a video and it's basically the free market except for the fact that Google steps in and they demonetize anything that's outside of the woke orthodoxy that the current political power is pushing or if it doesn't line up with the narrative they get rid of it but for the most part people are relatively free to say what they want on YouTube you get demonetized, obviously. I'm not saying it's ideal, but you couldn't predict that. You couldn't predict going back 20 years that YouTube would explode and that I would be loading up a video that people will listen to the first 30 seconds to and then tune out and go watch something else like Rogan's podcast. Or you never could have anticipated the global reach that Joe Rogan would have got solely by just being a cool dude that likes to get stoned and upload videos where he's talking with his friends. 
You couldn't predict that. Well, the, 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 the most dominant man in media would be a, a comedian and the host of Fear Factor who comments on cage fighting. Nobody could have guessed that. The same thing is true for all of these hype technologies. I'm just picking on the electric car. You have no idea when the infrastructure, the United States is a big place. The putting in charging stations just recently started going. There's places in America where people live where you still don't have cable. Like go, go to some of the mountains of West Virginia and look around there about how people are living. Or mountains in Appalachia or Colorado where you just don't have the infrastructure to make it out in the mountains. Electric vehicles, no different. But what this is, is what this is, is it, Sven Carlin showed this graph of who has flooded into the market with the COVID money. It wasn't people making a decent amount of money. And I believe those people are probably just maxing their tax advantaged accounts anyways, their 401ks. But it was people making zero to $20,000 a year were the biggest, were, what was the biggest demographic jump in investing in the market. So along came a bunch of people that don't understand the technology. They don't understand how to value a company. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm some financial stock genius. I have a process. It can be tuned. It could probably be better. But at least there's a process in place if I am looking at an individual stock. And I have certain criteria, criterion, however you want to put it, that it needs to meet in order for me to add it to my portfolio. So one of the main metrics is I want a 12 to 15% return. And if you're, if I'm not expecting that, I'm not buying. So there you go. There's a metric. But what happened with all these stimmy checks is people just flooded into the market and they're like, oh, Rivian, that is, that, that, that's an electric car maker. And they're going to be the next Tesla. That's why everybody's rushing in. They think they're going to be the next Tesla that shoots up to ungodly valuations and they're all going to get rich. Because there's a, I'm telling you right now, there are a lot of people holding Tesla stock that have no clue why stocks go up or down and they're constantly explaining to me about why I'm wrong when I tell them, listen, man, the cash flows just don't justify the market cap. And they say, well, you're an idiot. You just don't understand the technology behind it. The Tesla has pioneered this, this, and this technology. And I go, I don't care. I don't need to understand that. Although one of my golden rules is, do I understand a business model before I'm going to buy the stock? So you could come to me. I might look at the numbers and that might indicate that the stock is a buy. And then I might just look at you and go, you know what? CRISPR. CRISPR could have a PE ratio of 12. I don't know what it is right now. I'm just throwing that number out. It can have cash flows that justify a much higher market cap. I don't know that I would buy that stock as a, you know, definitively just run in because the numbers are telling me. Because I don't really have a good, I know what CRISPR is, but I don't really have a good grasp on what it actually is versus a company like Domino's. Uh, do you understand the business model of CRISPR versus Domino's? Which one do you understand better? Well, this one is, uh, they're doing gene editing therapy and this guy's over here selling pizzas. Right. Which one do you understand better? Well, I understand selling pizzas more. I'm not afraid to admit ignorance of a topic, unlike a lot of people who are on YouTube pushing these highly speculative stocks and trying to talk about whatever 
highly complicated subject matter. They don't have the education to understand, but yet they're out there pushing. I, I could be, this is, this is how much I know about CRISPR. If it's a person who has no idea, hasn't done any research, I could talk around most people and convince them to buy that stock. I wouldn't do that, but I understand the basic premise of what CRISPR does. Zinc scissors, they go in, they snip out defective DNA, they slide in a new piece of good DNA, your DNA adds that to the helix and it could cure things in the future like type 2 diabetes, all right? That's the bro science level of what's going on. Electric vehicles. I know enough. I know that it's going to be a tough sell. Getting these charging plants up and running, that's not only... That, and that's not the only problem. A bigger problem is, is at the actual point where people start highlighting the environmental devastation that are actually caused by electric vehicles. You have to dig cobalt out of the ground. You got to dig lithium out of the ground. You still need fossil fuels to actually create these electric vehicles. The power comes mostly from coal-fired plants. So, Again, you talk about this being a green technology, but it's not really a green technology. So then I sit there and I go, okay, what is this? This is an irrational speculative market. It's a bunch of people that haven't taken the time to, and and I say to people, if you don't think the electric vehicle market is a bubble, I want you to go back and look at every bubble throughout history, starting with the bicycle. Actually, start with the tulip bubble in Holland. Work your way up. Learn about a few bubbles. Understand there was a bubble in bicycle stocks in England in the late 1800s, early 20th century. Okay, that was the hype technology at the time. Bicycles are going to revolutionize cities. Turns out bicycles are still with us, but they didn't really revolutionize our lives. How much electric vehicles are going to revolutionize our lives? I'm not 100% sure. I'm really not. But that's where we get to. This is the height of the speculative bubble right now in the EV market. Rivian has sold 150 cars. They have a market cap of $129 billion. They have no cash flows, like I said, but 129 billion. Let me see something here. 129 billion. It's 100,000, 100 million. Divided by 20, just to give us a quick metric. So Rivian, to support that market cap right now, would generally need a free cash flow, depending on what you're going for. It could be selling at 10 times, or it could be selling at 20 times. I just used a multiple of 20, just as real quick. I, I understand there's other multiples you could use. But I mean, even if you're doing... 10 times, you know, I I mean, it's still a ridiculously high sum. So there we are, $64 billion. And I I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know what to tell you. The massive amount of growth that you would need, and it has an earnings per share of negative $16.12. The amount of growth that you would need is got to be over 100% per year for the next 10 to 15 years to justify paying $146 for its stock. But yet, if you point out all these things to whatever new investor, and this is, this is the problem, man. Human beings get their ego caught up in everything. It's like... You know, like, listen, man, I'd sell that Rivian stock and I would just, I would, 
I don't know what it's going to do tomorrow. It's $146. It could be a $1,000 stock tomorrow or it could be a dollar. I don't know what it's going to do. Maybe you want to gamble. Maybe you look at me and you go, listen, bro, I know Rivian doesn't support that market cap, but I allocated gambling money to it and that's what I'm doing or I'm trading it and day trading. All right, whatever is what it is, man. You do you. But it's the point of the fact there's no other way around it. We are in the height of the speculative bubble. I don't know how much. I thought we hit the height last year. But every time I think we hit the height, a new ridiculous stock comes along and everybody's buying it. And it's hilarious. I don't know when this bubble is going to crash, but I'm just sitting back now at this point going... For a while, I was getting mad. I was like, I was like, what is going on with this market? This is moronic. Now I'm to the point where I'm like, this is hilarious. I'm gonna get be I'm gonna be called a moron for telling you not to buy this stuff until it all crashes, right about the time when the Fed starts to raise the interest rate next year in the beginning of 2023, or if inflation starts burning hot. But I just And you can tell the hype is there because if I say this, I go, well, did you see the new electric Hummer? Biden, (laughs) I had this thought and don't think in any way that this is something I wanted to, I want to happen. I don't like, there's a lot of people out there, man, that they'll hate the president. If he's the opposite party, I don't do that. I'm like, to me, Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, whether I voted for you or not, I still want you to be a good president because that means it's good for the country. But my thoughts on that aside, I was looking at, I was watching Biden test drive that Hummer and I'm like, what if that thing just exploded and burst into flames? That would be the end of the EV bubble, bubble right there. Like, could you imagine the horror of the president of the United States getting into the new electric car? That would be the end of the electric car. He accelerates and it just explodes right there. And they're like, uh, uh, like, yeah, we were telling you there were some problems with Tesla batteries, man. I know that they went over that with a fine tooth comb and it was just a ridiculous thought I had. Because I was like thinking, what would end this market? And I stumbled across that article. But the electric Hummer is $108,000. Rivian is a luxury automaker too. So basically Rivian making 150 cars, no economies of scale, is going to, is, is going to like compete with the legacy automakers and their economies of scale. I mean, you're acting like Ford, GM, whoever, Toyota. You're acting like they're not rapidly working on their electric vehicle technology. I wonder what, we gotta look at this. I gotta look at this. Rivian, book value per share. Rivian, book value per share. This is how I, uh, this is what I go on if your company doesn't have cash flows to give me an idea of how much the stock is worth. Every article, a truly scary valuation. 129, I don't know what it is, man. I, I'm not going to sit, I, I, I don't want to have the, I don't want to sit here and figure it out. Um, but I'm sure it's, I'm sure their book value per share is nowhere near $146. All right. We got some good laughs out of that. I'm going to go a little bit longer than I normally go tonight just because I'm only going to do this video. I'm tired. I need to get to bed early tonight. 
so I can do a discounted cash flow tomorrow. But you know what? I'm just going to call that a rant on Rivian because I'm just tired and I don't know that I feel like talking about this anymore. So anyways, I'm going to call that a rant because everybody's probably tuned out by this point anyways. And they're probably like, yeah, who is this guy with a stupid Hawaiian shirt he wears in every video? Get that guy out of here. I'm going to go watch Jeremy LaBeefy Le and see what he has to say about Tattooed Chef because he only makes one Tattooed Chef video a day or two. Anyways, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe or don't. And I'm out.